for the session on HMDs in augmented and virtual reality. I'm Shiram Azadi from Microsoft Research, and we have six great presentations, a, a packed schedule, four notes and two papers. Uh, and the first paper is Eye Wearable Technology for Machine Maintenance, Effects of Display Position and Hands-Free Operation. It's a paper from Siemens Corporate Research in Princeton, and the lead author is Zhang Jun Sam Zhang, or Sam, as he likes to be known, and he'll be giving the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. So wearable technology is hot. Has anyone bought Apple Watch yet? Well, we ordered one last week for research purpose. So hopefully it will be the paper for next year. But for today, we are going to focusing on eye wearable technology. And most people call, it, call them smart glasses. And then, of course, you all are familiar with uh, Google Glass and generate a lot of excitement. And, and recently, it looks like it's failing at Microsoft. And HoloLens certainly generate a lot of buzz. And the other two over there, Epson Moverio and Meta Wang, they are less well known. In fact, they are not the whole picture. And this is not even a comprehensive you know, survey. You can see there are a lot more you know, smart glasses out there and with different you know, designs and interesting features, etc. So, And so what we actually trying to classify here is, you see, they, they have a slight different focus. And some of them are mostly uh, focusing on consumer and entertainment industry, where maybe these eye wearables, uh, it's good to have. And we think, actually, in, in industry, the wearables actually really deliver, can deliver the value. And in fact, Gartner even predicts, so in 2016, uh, 17 smart glasses uh, may begin to save the fuel service or industrial maintenance for one billion your dollars per year. So I guess everything starts with B. That sounds interesting, right? And so let's see why they think this will generate a lot of benefits. And, and this is the state of the art uh, for machine maintenance. So paper and pencil are still popularly used in the field. Uh, they are reliable good user experience to some extent. And if you look at situations like this, right, these are the operators doing the wind turbine maintenance. And it's hard to imagine paper and pencil or even tablet or, of course, laptop computer, etc. It would be really, really difficult to use. And these wind turbines are as tall as 300 feet or 100 meters. And so we think wearables, so we started with our vision. We'll show you a little video how wearables may be used in the fuel service. So this is our team. I'll jump to more interesting. Glass. Fix a loose turbine. Are the blades attached? Yes. Open the cover and check the internal assembly. Okay, Glass. How that?
my six-year-old boy, Alan. So we think even the six-year-old can take advantage of eye-wearable technology, such as uh, Google Glass to help him fix the Lego turbine. Maybe engineers can do the same. So after that, so we develop our you know, ideas uh, into a prototype, and then we'll show you a, a very quick you know, demo. We would like to introduce our wearable solution for industrial maintenance. Let's see how it works. Start maintenance. You have three tasks to complete. It supports hands-free operation with workflow guidance. It also supports remote collaboration and smart documentation. We demonstrate our prototype at the largest train technology trade show. So there was the Inno train last year in Berlin, and, and we received you know, lots of good feedbacks. And in fact, uh, we have another paper uh, at the interactivity section where I'm also presenting this. If you guys want to try out later, feel free to, to stop by. So, so far, looks good. So it looks like the, the key benefits. So look into these your scenarios. We can see, well, it looks like it really supports hands-free operation, and that can be really good. And then allow people to do easy attention switching between the information on the display and, and the work they are working on. Very good to share situation awareness. So they all sound good, right? Except when we look into the literature, it turns out, and these are all pretty much claim benefits. They are really lacking your systematic and scientific evidence. And, and in fact, as the technology is still evolving, developing, and there are lo lots of these confound your know, factors, and people use all kinds of different way to develop the technology and test it, and which is very hard to uh, generalize their findings. And those technology factors certainly are not well teased out. And take these two glasses, for example. So Google glasses to the left, as you can see, the design certainly is very different from the Epsom Mavario to the right. And in fact, this we call it, so eyewear peripheral, there's only one display, and they purposely put on top of, so your, your upper, your right eye corner, so and it's at your peripheral, and it's not really blocking your field of view. And then the other Epsom Mavario, like many other in your classes, they directly put the, uh, the display in front of your, your eyes. So, so our, our goal is really try to investigate what characteristic of all these you know, eye-wearable technology can re really have impact on people's performance, users' performance. And specifically, we want to study the hands-free operation and also the display position effect. And in fact, I'll play another video. Wearable technology has a lot of potential applications in industrial settings. We conduct an experiment in car maintenance with four conditions, a peripheral eye-wearable display, a central eye-wearable display, a tablet, or a paper menu. The study include eight maintenance tasks involve locate, manipulate, compare, and reactions. We found a significant effect of display position, but no effect for hands-free operation, and technology effect were also modulated by task and action types. Yeah, that's it for my talk. You know, I, I love this 30 seconds video because you don't need to go read through the pen, 10 pages paper. Uh, I'll share with you just a little bit more details about the study. So there are four conditions we want to look at. So, so we call eyewearable, uh, represented by your know, Google Glass, and uh, eyewear central by Epsom Novario. And of course, and we want to include the, the state of the art paper and also becoming one more popular tablets are used. And we select the car maintenance uh, as an experiment condition for two kinds of reasons. One, we noticed in the past, certain you know, people can use Legos to do experiment, but in general, those are lack of you know, ecological validity, right? And the other, on the other hand, is certainly we hope we can you know, conduct really the, the real you know, train engineering maintenance as well as wind turbine but then it's very difficult to find enough people and then to allow us to do some statistical analysis in order to publish in Kai. So anyway, and we found the car maintenance certainly is a good representative 
and then ecologically also valid task because people actually are actually dealing with machines and they also need help with instructions. So let's look at a little bit uh, close at the four technology conditions. So eyewear peripheral, so certainly uh, it's eyewear, eyewear central, it's all eyewear. And then the other two conditions are non unwear. So if you compare these two, uh, and then you can study the effect of uh, the hands-free operation. And then the other, so eyewear peripheral, the display is at above, is upper side, uh, and then eyewear central is really central. But what we don't want to study, we want to control is really the navigation because there are different ways to interact with the technology. That's the thing we also have impact you know, to the performance. In this case, we try to use the wizard of their arts approach. Basically, people will be using voice to do the, the screen navigation. And then there's a wizard where we will switch the display. And in fact, all the, youth, all the participants were amazed by how reliable the voice control was until they find out the wizard of arts approach. And of course, uh, there are, we, we chose a different kind of a maintenance task, and these are all related to the inspection, including the checking the engine oil, and the fuse, air filter, headlight, brake fluid, coolant, battery, et cetera. And then we also notice, as we look close to, into these different maintenance tasks, uh, they actually involve with different kind of action, which also associate with different level of cognitive workload, uh, as well as different you know, resources challenges, like for instance, the locate action. Mostly, you know, people need to find the objects among you know, all these different components and require a lot of visual search and, and manipulation action. So people really need to use certain tools to work on the task and compare action. They need to do uh, so the status comparison and of course that is also read action. And this is a specific example about the few box checking and you can see there are certain locate task, locate a few box and then need to do some action, pull the latches and then remove the cover so these are the instructions people will see using uh, one of those four display conditions. And so to sum up, these are the experiment variables. We want th four different technology and then a lot of different tasks and four different action types. We want to study how they can impact people's performance as well as their experience. And a little bit more detail about the experiment. There are 12 participants. And in fact, they don't really have a lot of your know, car maintenance your know, experience. And then we counterbalance the, the order of different technology and, and, the, and we perform it at, in, in our you know, parking space, as you can see here. And so this is the main result. And technology has a significant effect. And then technology and task and technology and action type all have significant interaction effect. So let's look a little bit into the detail. So the, in this case, performance is the reaction time. So the longer, the, the worse. And so as you look closely, you will find out, it turns out actually, so eyewear peripheral, namely Google Glass condition, actually performed much worse than the eyewear central. So that actually came as a big surprise to us. So later we look into how actually people, so the character, characteristic uh, about people's eye movements. So in order to you know, look at, so there are different, there are six different muscles that drives our eyes and into different location. And then the eyewear peripheral, so they purposely put the display upper corner, so re require this you know, eye movement called extortion. So you pretty much have to move your eyes up and, and then hold it there in order to you know, look at the information, which is extremely uncomfortable situation, and then you cannot hold it for too long. And uh, on the other hand, so if we look at your know, absolute variable or these eyewear central, so pretty much people, need, they need to converge their eyes to look at the display information and then diverge their eyes to look at the, the real world. So apparently people are, are much better in, uh, in doing this. Uh, another factor is we actually didn't find any difference between the uh, eyewear versus non-eyewear. So the hands-free is not really playing a big factor. And, and then as we look closely uh, about how people actually did it, so these are the two screenshots. And you can see in this case, uh, uh, this is a tablet condition. So people are quite adaptive. They, well, so they actually found, found some spot, nice spot, a, a flat surface, and this is really the engine. They put the tablet over there, so then free their two hands to do the task. And, and then this is a, a screenshot of people wearing the smart glasses, and, and then when they 
actually bend down their head and it's very slippery, so they have to use their hand to hold their uh, the, the glass, which defeats the purpose of hands-free. And there's interaction effect between the technology and action, so it turns out, uh, so the manipulate location is really bad, and, and that, so if you look closely, um, slower in, in, in the lo locate task, actually it's not the manipulate, it's locate. So it turns out that that's the similar your reason like we discussed earlier. So locate just people need to spend a little more time to look for the task, and the longer actually the people need to hold their eyes at an uncomfortable position, the worse actually uh, they perform. And so this is so there. There actually are two reasons why this eccentricity fixation is really unnatural, and also the monocular display uh, and then re compete the information so people some they have to you know, filter out one visual channel in order to look at the, the other channel and that's becoming really difficult so lastly is the interaction effect between the technology and the task if you look at this graph and then you can see that this re really stands out and then there's another one and it turns out these are the two tasks one is called blade a brake fluid check the other one is the the battery check and later we also ask people, so it turns out these are not really most difficult tasks, but the display, actually the, the instruction is ambiguous. Like for instance, in this case, they have to check the fluid level, is it okay? So this is the instruction they receive, but actually they cannot tell the status from the outside. They have to open the cap, which we didn't include you know, in the instruction. So, so once we start grouping the, uh, the A task into, so there are six tasks with very clear instruction and then there's two with very uh, not clear instruction we call ambiguity high and ambiguity low you can see actually I wear so the distance re so the I wear actually really suffer at the ambiguity high so this we call it over reliance effect so when the display display information really close to your eyes actually people tend to trust it more you know they they less likely to give up saying oh actually they have to figure out by looking at the world so that's the over reliance effect also discovered in other places. So this is the summary. And so lastly, I, I want to, so Thad Stoner I think he's a pioneer in this field and he also contributed to the class. He said, glass takes the technology out of the way so that the user can focus on what matters. And this is the screen shot we took while the user performing the task. As you can see, the, because it's out, outdoor, uh, the, this, uh, it's very actually bright so they have to cover sometimes uh, they put their hands in front of their eyes in order to see the information clearly display those technologies thank you <laughs>